This is the, an unpublished translation of part of, uh, of Egen and Droch, which he uh, was translated as uh, On My Own Narrow Path, subtitled A Spiritual Autobiography of a Modern Jew. And uh, bear in mind that when he came here, he'd been trained uh, to be an Orthodox rabbi. He lost his religion, I think, even before he came here. Many of the Jews in Eastern Europe and in Russia became turned towards socialism and became radicals or various degrees of socialists. And the whole world opened up before them at that point. They, uh, uh, they became partially secular. Some maintained their religion, some didn't. At some point, either then or after he arrived here, he lost his religion and no longer believed in any of the rituals and ceremonies that he'd been trained in and knew so much about. And here in his of Egen and Drochem, he writes about himself. I'll just read a little bit of it because it tells a, a very interesting transformation into a secular Jew who reveled in being an American and, and to some extent was seduced by American materialism and the values that we have here, which are really very, many ways, very comfortable and a nice way to live. So he writes, I left home when I was 13 years old. For almost five years, I wandered from one Talmudic academy to another and lived practically on a dole. At the age of 18, I arrived in the United States and went through all the drudgery and privation of the immigrant. I began to earn a living at the age of 30. He managed to get through high school and he learned the language, went through high school in about one year. And then after various jobs as a house painter, a truck driver, you name it, he managed to get into dental college and become a dentist. That's why it took him until the age of 30. Uh, and the army in there too, somewhere. And the army in between, right, in 1917. Right. At the age of 31, Three years after my graduation from college, well, the college is a dental college. No, I couldn't get into anything else. I bought my own home. It was a great emotional experience. My own piece of land and my own home. True, a small lot of ground, 20 by 100. Not much of a backyard. There was room for one tree only. The garden in front had room for one peony. I planted that and a space of two by two for the grass. But this piece of ground and the home on it were mine. I know in relation to the cosmos, it was not even a dot of a dust particle. But for me, it was an anchorage. On this piece of ground, my home, this is where I would always find a spring of living waters. Every night when I returned, my children were there waiting for me. I was no longer a bit of flotsam. Flotsam, I think. I was like a tree rooted deep in the earth. Yes, I know, even a tree dies, but death for me, just as for the tree, was not the reality. The sense of eternity was in being with my family, in my being wanted, in my family's need for me, and in my attachment and desire for my role and for the presence of the children. I told you that I often won't, well, he's, he's speaking to an interlocutor in this book, which is one of the clumsy things about the book. I told you that I often awoke in the dead of the night and listened to the children's rhythmic breathing. I especially remember one pre-dawn hour. I stood as usual for quite a while in the hall outside the doors of all the rooms and listened to the living stillness of the house and then went outside. I went to the garage, opened the car door, and sat on the front seat. I sat there motionless, holding my breath and listening. The prattle, the laughter, the noise of the children with whom I had gone to the beach the previous afternoon was still lingering in the air, in the, in, the, in the air of the car. Then after a while, I was not surprised when I smelt the fragment of her body. Now he goes on to talk about his love for my mother and so forth. Uh, sitting down, I looked up at the house and I saw through its thick brick walls every stick of furniture, every piece of clothing, and the shelves with their books. I was even aware of each nail in the wall, 
on which the printings and the photographs were hanging. I looked at the house for quite a while, and then its real importance dawned on me. The house and its fullness was not a reflection of a microscopic scop, uh, spot of dust in the universe. Looking from a cosmic height, it might seem so, but this was not its true image. I could get the true image of the house only through the perspective of my eyes as I sat there on the bench. The house and its fullness, all of it, was an entity by itself. She, his wife, the children, the accumulated modest possessions, my steady hunger for her, my delight in the children, all these were a reflection, an actual emission of eternal, absolute reality. So there you have him in full bloom as a secular Jew, absorbed in the reality of life in America, and what a change from the way he was raised.